Hi everyone, I'm Melissa with Midnight Hour Oil. Today I wanted to come out and share with you something that I really believe will encourage you. Uh, a word I was given the other night and then a dream that followed. Okay, so the other night I was getting ready to fall asleep. I was in that twilight state right before you fall asleep but you're still awake. And it's kind of hard to explain, but deep within me, like where my spirit is, you know how the Bible talks about deep calls to deep where the Holy Spirit speaks to our spirits. Uh, I could hear my spirit exclaiming these words, Jesus is coming back. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Jesus is coming back. Get ready, get ready, get ready with that kind of enthusiasm. And it kind of shocked me to hear my spirit saying that. So then I fell asleep and had this dream, which I believe the two are connected. And in the dream, I was at my sister's friend's house and I was getting ready to leave. So I left the house and went to the vehicle. And when I got to my vehicle, I felt impressed in my spirit to turn around and go back and bless my sister's friend and her household. So I did, I turned around, went back, and I just began speaking these blessings uh, over my sister's friend and the household. So when I woke up from that dream and began to ponder it, I felt like the Holy Spirit was showing me that this is the heart of the Father right now for us that, uh, yes, we are going to be taken out. I don't know when. I don't know the day. I don't know the hour. But I know we're in the season of the time when the Lord is coming for his church. And that that time, you know, that time is such an amazing time. It's called our blessed hope for a reason, church. There are some people who want to say that, uh, that it's an escapist mentality. Uh, and, and I understand where they're coming from because, yeah, we are here to do a job. Uh, and until that time comes, we need to stay engaged and continue to do the work of the Lord. But um, but we we have a blessed hope that we are intended to embrace. And, and, to, and that hope isn't just getting out of this world. That hope is our new bodies, our glorified bodies, where we will no longer experience pain or suffering or temptation. So that's what we have to look forward to, church. It's not just the time when we leave this, this world. The most important part is that we are going to be fully redeemed, right? That our bodies are going to be fully redeemed. Right now, uh, our spirit is redeemed, but we are still waiting. My cat's playing. We're still waiting for that time when the rest of our being is redeemed and we receive our new tense as uh, the Apostle Paul talked about. But okay, anyway, aside from that, how we can bless people uh, who are left here. And, and, you know, I'm reminded of Jacob and how when he was getting ready to pass away, he, in Genesis chapter 47, spoke a blessing over his son Joseph and then uh, Joseph's sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. And the Bible tells us that the power of life and death are in the tongue. And it's really important for us to be careful of the words we speak because I believe that's literal. I believe we can actually open doors to hell through speaking curses, word curses. Uh, but speaking a blessing is, is equally powerful because it can really inspire hope and even life uh, in, in a person. When people are struggling and they're in the tribulation and it is dark and it is there is death and there is suffering everywhere, uh, the thing people will need more than anything is going to be the hope of the promises of God, okay? And they will need to focus their attention on God's promises. Just like Abraham, when he was promised uh, a son, the Bible tells us that he he didn't deny the truth. I mean, he, he recognized that he was old, that Sarah was old, uh, but at the same time, he chose to focus on the promise of God and give God glory. And so for the people who are left here, uh, the best thing I think we can do is just offer them the promises of God uh, in maybe a written form to read over themselves. Some people I know have put together left behind letters and things like that with instructions on how to survive. But I think the best thing we could give people is the hope of the promises of God, that if they will remain faithful to Christ Jesus after they are born again during the tribulation, uh, if they won't take that mark, that they will have eternal life in Christ. And, uh, and there's nothing more important than their eternal souls being saved. 
and things like this and, and maybe just writing out a blessing over them uh, that they will have the strength, the grace, the power to walk out the walk until uh, they meet the Lord. So these are things to consider, ways to bless people. I mean, there's other ways, of course, some people leave leaving uh, Bibles in your house or food supplies uh, or other things that could help people to uh, survive. Those are all good things. But I think a special blessing that you could write out that that person could speak over themselves uh, would go a long way in, in encouraging people to hold on to hope because that will probably feel like all that they have is hope. And if you listen to people who have gone through very difficult times and their lives were on the line, they were in hiding because of their, their faith in Christ and uh, or were in concentration camps, their, their circumstances weren't easy, but they kept holding on to hope, just like the patriarchs in Hebrews chapter 11. They held on to hope. And even the patriarchs didn't see the promise of God's uh, promise come to fulfillment in their lifetime. They went out believing, right? So everything that we hope for, we may not see it fulfilled in our lifetime, but God's promises will be fulfilled in his perfect time and in his perfect way. And for us to hold on to that hope is critical. And uh, Paul talks about it in Romans chapter 5. He says this, uh, verses 3 through 5. He says, and not only this, but we also exalt in our tribulations, knowing that tribulation brings about perseverance and perseverance proven character and proven character hope. And hope does not disappoint. All right, so if we can just offer people hope, I believe that will really help them stay the course uh, in a time of unparalleled darkness and struggling and suffering. So think about that, church. Take this to the Lord in prayer and ask him for a confirmation. And as always, church, it is my prayer that we will all continue to keep our lamps burning bright while we wait for Jesus. I love you all. God bless you.